To understand why we need those velocities, we gotta go all the way back to how we solve differential equations. Remember, we are talking about the solution to the wave equation, d2y dx2 equals one over velocity squared d2y dt2. So remember, we're just guessing solutions, plugging them in, making sure they work. But remember, the mathematicians have this theorem that says that's okay, this uniqueness and completeness theorem. And it says that solution is unique and complete, meaning it is the real motion of the string, if you have a boundary condition for each order of the differential equation. Okay, so for the oscillating mass in a spring, second order differential equation. We had d2y dt2 equals something times y. So we needed an initial position and an initial velocity. Now, this is second order in time and space. Okay. We have d2y dx2 and d2y dt2. So now we need more boundary conditions. We need two spatial two spatial and two temporal boundary conditions. So let's see if we have them. Well, let's look at space first. In space, we have the fact that we're working with a clamped string. So we know that y of zero for all time is gonna be zero. That's the clamp at the left. And we know that y at L for all time is gonna be zero. So there's two spatial boundary conditions. I like to call them a certain point in space for all time. I like to do that so much, I couldn't remember it. I had to read it. A certain point in space for all time. Because that's what it is. It is a boundary condition. Initial conditions and boundary conditions are really the same thing. It's a condition, a certain point in space at all time. Now. Let's look at time. So there's two, we got that covered. So time, we could describe the initial shape. Right, this is what we did with the Fourier series. We said there's a shape, there's a pulse, we described it, and we described it as some shape y of x. But we said, now that's the initial shape. y of x at t equals zero. And now we're saying we also need the initial velocities. Even though we have this pulse, we need to know is the left side going up and the right side going down or vice versa or what's it doing? So we need the initial velocities and don't mix them up. This is the velocity down the medium. Here I mean the velocity, the transverse velocity of the string moving up and down. So we've got two velocities running around in here. Y dot right, dy dt of um, x and zero. Okay, so this is not the velocity down the string, this is the transverse velocity, dy dt, of the thing moving up and down. That's the initial velocity sort of shape. And this is a certain point in time for all space. So they're kind of symmetric. Okay. They don't feel symmetric, right? This is a clamp. Right? And this is a function. How, how does that work? How is this a clamp? This is a function. That's because we think of time and space as different, right? This is a clamp, but it sits there for all time. So in the sense it is a function, it's just a function through time. This is a function through space. This is a shape that we think of. I can plot the shape of the pulse. I can plot a plot of the initial velocities. But this sort of at a deeper level is what's really going on. We need all this information according to uniqueness and completeness to really get the full solution of this equation to really describe the pulse going down the string.